guys, it's Josh Molino Reefer here, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to recognize and treat saltwater marine velvet. Now, the reason I'm making a velvet only video is because I feel like whenever I look up saltwater velvet on YouTube, I get ick and and marine velvet. I never see one by itself because, in my opinion, I feel like velvet and ick are two separate things. And I feel like velvet needs to be treated as own entity, and so does it. So that's what I'm making today's video. So, all right, the scientific name of marine velvet is, let me double check this, Amy Lodinium oscillatum. Yeah, I probably just murdered that, but that is the name of marine velvet. Um, marine velvet is different from ick, which ick's Ita uh, Italian Latin name is cryptocurrency my Fisher Scuritin. Not really, it's like crypto curitin, irritin or something, but a little bit about marine velvet and a background. It is a dino legit, legit, legit words right here. Marine velvet is a dinoflagellate, and basically it's a single-celled organism that has two flagella and it essentially uses these little tails to move around in the water and when it is swimming it uses these tails to propel it forward. Um, on a side note, zoologists are classified marine velvet as a protozoa and it's in the kingdom protozoa. So if you remember anything about high school biology, you know, kings play card on fat green stools. It is one of the first, it is one of the kingdom and it's actually its own kingdom. It's not a plant and it's not an animal, which is why it's a protozoa. If that makes any sense, I'm hoping I'm not murdering my biology degree that I'm working on. So I haven't earned it yet. So you get the idea. Anyways, the life cycle of marine velvet is similar to that of egg, where you have a trophin stage and a toment stage. The trophin stage is when the fish, or when the parasite, swims up, attaches to your fish, eats the fish, reproduces, and it falls off. The toment stage is essentially the egg stage, where the egg on the bottom reproduces, and then once it hatches, it becomes a trophin. And it's just the cycle that continues and continues and continues. And one marine parasite can, one marine velvet parasite can multiply into hundreds over the course of a few days. Now, I'm gonna give some signs on how to identify fish. I think this is the most important in order to recognize and treat marine velvet. Unlike ick, where your fish can essentially live with ick. I keep doing air quotes. Anyways, it's not one of those diseases you can live with. Let's just say this. For example, if it's the cold season and you have the cold, you can live with the cold. You can develop an immunity so the next time or it come, the same virus comes to attack your body, you will fight off it because your white blood cells remember, remember that uh, virus that is now in your body. It's same thing with ick on fish. It can essentially develop an immunity to it. They build up their slime coat and it helps fight off the parasite, but it's not the most effective way. Marine velvet is kind of like cancer. I know it's a drastic comparison, but if you don't deal with cancer, it will ultimately kill you. Same with marine velvet. If you don't deal with the marine velvet, it will kill the fish. I know those are kind of like comparisons, but I'm just trying to get you to let you know the drastic degree of which marine velvet is. It it can wipe out a tank within 24 hours, and it's just something you really, really, really don't want in your tank if you can avoid, which is why you always want to quarantine your fish. I'm going to go over some behavioral signs of marine velvet. When your fish is sick, it's typically going to have four signs. It's going to have a reduced loss of appetite, it's going to be heavy breathing, you're going to see the gills like, well, if you look at the fish and it's not breathing, it's almost taking in gasless air, it's 
breathing heavily, and that's because the parasite is actually attached to the gills. So it's one of the things you need to be wa what you always want to look for when you're looking at your fish. Another behavioral symptom is you will see your fish swimming towards the power head. So if you have your power head going this way, it's the fish will be swimming to the power head. That is because the parasite is living in their gills and they have a decreased rate at which they are able to breathe in oxygen into their bodies. And then another one that's kind of like in the later stages of the disease is they almost act reclusive. Essentially that means any if your fish is normally like active will always come to the tank when you're there because it knows you're, you're a sign of food. If it stops doing this and it, you turn the lights on and it goes away, that's not really a good sign and it's a key indicator that your fish may have marine milk. Now, some physical symptoms that you will see on your fish, are, it's, I hate always comparing it to ick, but you're gonna see little white dots on your fish. But there is something good to note. If you ever have had ick on your fish, they look like giant grains of salt. If you wanted to, you could go through and count each grain of salt. Whereas with marine velvet, it's almost a sprinkles. You ever take like a jar of sprinkles and you just pour them all over the cupcake and you couldn't count them even if you tried? Marine velvet is essentially that way. If you were to try and count the parasite on the fish, it's nearly impossible. It almost looks like the fish was dusted with egg and it is noticeably smaller when you see it on the fish. I'll show you a picture right here. And you can essentially, you can see the difference between like egg and marine velvet. Now, before I tell you some treatment options, I do want to let you know that I can't stress the importance of treating marine velvet. If you see it on your fish, you need to act fast. The parasite can kill your fish within a matter of hours. It can wipe out a tank in 24 hours. I was reading some forums online and I have seen where people have lost their entire tank within 24 hours to marine velvet. So these are some ways you can treat it. I'm going to go over my personal favorite way to treat velvet as the last option, but you get the idea. All right. One of the first treatment options I'm going to tell you about is a natural immunity. And now I was kind of hesitant to include this in one of the discussions because it's really hard for a fish to develop a natural immunity. And even if they do, typically they will die within six months of building up this immunity. There I go again with these air quotes. But anyways, so you essentially introduce the fish to marine velvet and it starts to build up this immunity. It's kind of like the same reason you get the flu vaccine. The flu vaccine contains dead viruses of the flu. So essentially that our white blood cells will start attacking this and they will build up an innate immune response to this. So if our body was to ever come in contact with the flu, our white blood cells say, hey, I have seen that before. Let me go attack it before it makes the rest of the body sick. Essentially, that's what you're going to be doing with the fish is you're going to introduce small quantities of the velvet to the fish and it's going to develop this innate response over time. The problem with this, it's really hard to control this. I was reading a study, I'll see if I can find the link, I'll post it in the comment section below, but essentially what these researchers were doing is they were taking some clownfish, they were introducing it to it, to pet velvet, sorry. They were introducing the fish to velvet, they would freshwater dip it, and they would put it back in the tank and see if it developed this immunity. Over time, they kept introducing it so the fish would build up this immunity to velvet. But my problem with this is I can see the practicality with doing something like this is I don't, I know I personally don't have the funds to develop an immunity hospital where I'm constantly dipping fish and introducing them to the parasite just to build up this immunity. And quite frankly, I feel like it's the most stressful on the fish. It is possible, like people can live with it, they can develop the fish's slime coat so they fight off the parasite if it ever gets into the system. But to me, I think it's the most risky one to do, but it's something you could always try. And 
If you ever have success or know anyone who has built a Unity to Velvet, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is hyposalinity. If you don't know what it is, I'm going to go over a brief synopsis of it. I took physiology like a year and a half ago, so anything hypo is kind of like rough to me, but essentially what it is, and so hopefully you can see this, essentially all around the fish is a salinity of 1.026. And the parasite right here has the same salinity of 1.026. So there's an equal concentration inside the parasite that there is outside. So you're gonna have an equilibrium of this parasite. Now, hyposalinity works by lowering the salinity. You do want to use a refractometer when doing this because the salinity is very important. But essentially, if you have the parasite in 1.009 salinity, you'll see right here, in order for the, it's kind of like osmosis, where you go from areas of higher concentration to areas of lower concentration, you're going to see an influx of water movement into the cell and it's essentially gonna cause it to, I think it's a good method to use, but this parasite, marine velvet, is constantly evolving. And I read online that this parasite has almost come resilient to hyposalinity treatment. Some parasites have been known to survive in 1.003 salinity, which is basically like nothing in terms of salinity. It's almost fresh water. But I just wanted to show you, it is an option to treat the fish over long term. I know it's really successful when treating the ick parasite using hyposalinity, but it's just another option. Another option you can do is a freshwater dip. Essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a bucket of water that has been heated to the right temperature, fresh water, just regular RODI water, and you're gonna take the fish and you're gonna put it in the water for at least five minutes. It's gonna have the same effect that a hyposalinity is, only it's gonna be more dramatic because you're gonna be introducing the parasite to fresh water, so the parasite essentially burst. Now, I do wanna point out that if you do a freshwater dip, it is not 100% effective because it only kills the parasites that are embedded on the surface of the fish. Anything that is embedded within the fish, like the gills or inside the, flesh, the fish's muscles, will not be affected. It only affects the surface fish, which is kind of nice for a quick treatment, but regarding a freshwater dip, you do need to go into the last treatment, which I feel is the most effective when treating marine velvet. Now, I did want to include this next one. It's essentially what you're doing is if you ever had a freshwater tank and you had an experience with velvet, you know that velvet is a photosynthetic organism. I know we're going from freshwater, now we're in salt, and the parasite is completely different, but I have read online that blacking out your tank is a possible solution to killing velvet. It is, again, very controversial, and I doubt you'll have any success with it, but if you are in a bind and you're looking to treat the fish and you don't have any medication, it's something you could potentially do is black out your tank until you get the medication to treat your fish either in the tank or in a separate quarantine tank so you don't kill your corals and inverse in your main display. All right, guys, so you freshwater dipped your fish or you're ready to treat your fish, and I think the most effective way to kill velvet in that is using... Dropped it. Coopermine. Coopermine is essentially a form of copper, or it is copper, that you dump into the tank and it kills the parasite. Now, the problem with cupramine is you cannot treat it directly in your main display tank if you have snails, hermit crabs, shrimps, or corals, because those are inverts, and cupramine will kill them. So, in order to treat cupramine, you either need to have a fish-only system or have a separate quarantine system. Now, typically with something like ick, I don't prefer removing the fish because I I personally like the natural immunity response, but with velvet, you have to treat them right away. I don't care how stressful it is, this parasite is going to kill them unless you don't act fast, so you need to treat them with cupramine. Now, I know with cupramine, it says you want to do a half dosage and then you want to do the other half 48 hours later. Don't do that. Go ahead and toss the fish and pour the full dosage in the tank. You really need to act fast with this parasite. Now, there is one thing I do need to note with cupramine. Cupramine 
is only successful at a certain range. Now read the bottle that your comes with for that range. But one thing I do need to tell you to get is a test kit because you want to make sure that the copper is at the ideal level. Too low and it's not going to kill the parasite too high and you kill the fish. You're kind of doing a tug of war here, but you want to find that perfect balance where it kills the parasite and doesn't harm the fish. So that I think that's the most effective way. So, yeah. I do want to throw a disclaimer out there that even though you have followed some of these steps in order to treat velvet, chances of being successful in killing the disease are usually pretty unlikely unless you notice it in a very early stage. So I don't want you to like comment below and be like, oh, my fish died and I did what you said. I do want to let you know that this is, uh, this is worse than I know I don't want to use that analogy again. It's cancer in fish, and it will kill them in hours. I know cancer doesn't just kill someone within hours, but it's pretty bad, and you need to act promptly in order to save your fish. So, all right, guys, I do want to thank you so much for watching today's video. I know it was kind of morbid, and I kind of had more of a serious tone going on, but I just really wanted to get the idea on how to treat marine velvet and recognize the disease itself. So. I do want to thank you so much, you guys so much for watching. As always, give this video a thumbs up, like it, and subscribe, and keep on reefing.